Hi everyone, I'm Magic Dave, and I'm the solo developer of this game, which is called Sapiens. Sapiens has been in development for about five years now, and uh, I've, I've really only worked on it about two and a half years of that time. Initially it was just a hobby project, and I sort of ramped up development over the last year or two. In this video I wanted to do a summary of the progress over the past year. Uh, I did a video about a year ago that went over the previous four years of development, but I'll also do a quick recap first of that four year period and then go straight into this year. So let's go right back to the beginning to start with, and this was basically just a terrain engine, and I didn't really even know if it was going to be a game or what I was doing, but I was just sort of messing around. It pretty quickly started to look quite interesting though, so I started to post about it on YouTube, and I started to sort of work on refining the graphics a lot. I rewrote the atmosphere shaders a number of times until I found something that I was quite happy with and then I started working on the uh, materials on the terrain and also added some objects and got them all looking good in the world too. I added a physics engine and started messing around with a bit of VR support and then I added shadows and worked on sort of rendering more trees, worked on the water quite a lot uh, and then I went a little bit crazy and added a climate model to the world and started using that to drive biomes and added a bit more diversity with sort of placeholder models in, in the deserts and, and alongside the rivers and everything. Then I decided it was time to add some interactivity to the world and actually turn it into a game. I'd set it on the theme which was going to be people instead of sort of sci-fi which I'd initially thought. And so if I was going to have people, I was going to need good uh, good animations support. So where all the trees and models before had been sort of hard coded into the game, you now I started using Blender, and I started rigging up models and exporting out boned animations and all that kind of stuff and using the GLTF file format. Then I wanted to get the building mechanic in and, and work on the building of campfires and walls and digging the terrain. And at this point it just started to feel a little bit more like a game. It was then that I decided to ditch the low poly look and go with the smooth normals look and, and sort of leafy textures and, and grass and stuff. And honestly this was probably the best decision that I made through the entire process. I think that at this point it really developed its own graphical style that set it, set it apart from, from where it had been before. And this was also the, the time that I decided on the name Sapiens. And, and really it just suddenly all came together at this point and felt, felt like it was going to be a thing. Around this time also I spent quite a lot of time on the user interface and thinking about how the game was actually going to play and how it was going to work. Uh, and I end ended up adding a skills system at this point and, and a bit of a research tree which uh, ended up quite different but has still was, it was important to start thinking about this at that time. After that I spent about six weeks porting the entire engine from OpenGL to Vulkan. Uh, that was perhaps a little bit crazy but I was just feeling quite uncomfortable about carrying on with OpenGL at that point. I knew I still had a couple of years of development and the landscape was changing quite rapidly so I thought it was time then to either, you know, make the call and I decided to go with Vulcan and ultimately that was a really good decision too because I really increased my frame rate substantially and it helped me to further my own skills in graphics development and also means that my engine is going to be a bit more future proof. Cool so now we'll get to the start of this year and I'll talk about what I've worked on in a bit more detail. The first thing that I worked on was beds. I thought that it would be a good idea to get them sleeping through the night and that you should be able to place beds inside sort of houses and stuff. And so I made it so that you could clear grass and that those the, the resulting grass would then turn into hay. Once you had hay you could then use that to, to craft beds. There are quite a lot of implications to, to adding this fairly simple feature and I ended up uh, redoing a bunch of the terrain sort of placement tools as well as the uh, storage areas. I, I went and redid how all of the storage areas worked uh, to allow for sort of grass turning into hay and, and things like that. And I also worked a bit on snapping of, of building components together and, and sort of fleshed out that mechanic a bit more. 
I then worked quite a lot on the AI and basically rewrote the entire AI system. Previously it had been a hive mind sort of best fit system where you know if there was a job that needed to be done it would just find the closest sapien and, and go from there kind of thing. Whereas I thought it would be nice if it was a more natural system where each individual sapien had sort of wants and needs and, and decided what they wanted to do based on what they could see and you know what needed to be done around them. Uh, and I've, I've stuck with that new system and I think, I think it's really good, it's, it's providing quite natural kind of interactions and stuff. And uh, this was also when I added the waving interaction and that to, the, to this day is still the only interaction that they have with each other, uh, but that will change very soon. Uh, and I worked a bit on the water sort of sparkles and stuff and, uh, and on the fire particles as well. The next thing I did was to replace all of the UI with 3D models, so all the buttons, all the panels, and even, even the text is embossed and lit using the same rendering code as what's rendering the world. This was quite a major job at the time, but it's really paid off. It's given me a really consistent look throughout the user interface, and it's also very easy for me to create new elements by just creating new models in Blender. And when I go to use them in the user interface, I can resize them quite a lot before having to create new models, and everything's all pixel perfect when it's rendered on the screen. I also added in all of the order markers, uh, so this was really kind of vital to just show where you had actually queued up actions that the, the sapiens needed to complete, and give you something to click in, in many cases to actually go in and cancel those orders. And I worked on the skills system a bit more and actually made it so that they needed to learn how to craft fire in order to light a fire. And this was still a bit clunky at the time, but it was a good start and sort of set me off in the right direction. Uh, things are going quite well there now. I then went on to add chickens to the game. I did this because I really felt it was time to start thinking about how hunting was going to work as well as like tool making and just the general crafting system as well. And I haven't really taken it any further than this, uh, I haven't added any new animals and in fact I think hunting's broken at the moment. But getting started with chickens and hunting at this point was a good thing to do. It made it a lot clearer what all the systems were that I needed to get in place for this to work properly. And I'll be adding a whole bunch of new animal types and working on hunting again very soon. Next I added thatch houses and I worked quite a bit on the whole kind of process of building so they actually have to stack the resources up first and then start building. I also got them carrying multiple items at a time so they could stack up sort of smaller items like branches or hay and sort of carry multiple things. And I spent quite a lot of time writing my own ray casting code. I was using the physics engine to do this before uh, but I had struck quite a number of issues with doing that and in the end I figured it was probably easiest to just write my own code. So it's now got pixel perfect ray casting so when you're looking at, a, at an item you know that that's you know that it's going to get selected and um, yeah that was well worth doing you know it, it's a great solution that I've come up with and it's working really well. And then I first added the quick action menu which I've stuck with and is definitely going to be in the game. It's a really nice quick way to queue up um, orders of, you know to chop down trees or to gather things or you know just a contextual menu and it's working really well. I also added the ability to queue up placement orders for any kind of object, so a branch or a rock or whatever. Uh, and I think this is going to be awesome in the game. It's going to make it really um, customizable and really make it so that you can build whatever you like. Uh, it was very early stages at this point, and I've continued to improve it a lot. But it was uh, this is where it's kind of started. Then I started working on a crafting system. It sort of didn't go that well to start with, really. But I was I managed to make it so that you could craft some spears and some sort of axe heads to to chop down trees. I was trying to make it sort of as quick and sort of contextual as I could so you just basically placed like a spear on the ground and then they would come and sort of bring the components and build it. Uh, but it, it wasn't really going to work out especially when you started when I started thinking about um, smelting metals and things where they'd actually need some kind of a you know a smelter or you know a furnace to actually do it. Uh, so yeah I mean this was a good start and at least I had the ability to craft some things but I've actually quite changed it significantly since this time. Throughout this period too I was constantly refining sort of the building mechanisms and how everything worked. There were just, there's just so many things that in fact this year in general has just been a huge amount of refining the user interface and refining how things work. 
I then spent quite a long time on pathfinding. Uh, it was all very well adding the ability to place objects anywhere you like, but um, it caused quite a few problems with pathfinding. They have to then be able to walk on things that you place. Uh, they have to be able to like walk around fences that you've created out of individual items. And that potentially could be get very slow and it really needed a good solution. So I made a really good start on that and it's all pretty solid. Uh, it still needs a bit of work from here, but it's, um, you know, it's going pretty well. This was also when I decided to use Tokipona as the sapiens language. I haven't really taken it that far, I mean the, yeah, they're just the auto-generated names still, but it's just really cool. I think Tokipona is a fantastic um, fit for sapiens and it's just really cool using a um, constructed language in the game. I then decided to spend about two weeks adding virtual reality support. I'd been keeping VR in mind for some time and really the, the engine is designed to support VR, the, the user interface is designed to support, support VR, so it was another one of these sort of points in the development where it was like, well if I'm going to support VR, it, it's really time to make sure that everything works. So yeah, it took about two weeks to sort of get everything up and running, it's still very rough around the edges and it's going to need another few weeks of work and I'll probably do that right near the end, just before release. Uh, but yeah, my goal is to, to have VR support at launch and we'll see how that goes, but it's, it's just awesome. It's so cool being in, in this world in VR and it just it feels so immersive and, and so cool. Then I looked back at the skill system and the crafting system again. I made it so that you now place craft areas instead of just placing the sort of final crafted item on the ground. And this is a much better system that's going to allow you to sort of queue up multiple craft orders and sort of allow for more automation and stuff. I also sort of connected everything up so that the various things that you could craft were sort of locked behind required resources and required skills and it was all kind of nicely connected and it's still like this now so um, yeah I think it's working really well. You basically sort of have to learn a particular skill before you can then craft a particular item before you can then perhaps harvest a particular resource and it's all got this really nice sense of um, sort of progression and achievement. My focus was on getting to the point where they could cook chicken meat over the fire and I got that whole kind of process in place so they could go right from sort of learning how to hunt to then uh, learning how to butcher, creating, crafting, butchering knives, butchering the chickens and then learning how to cook the meat over the fire which they've also had to learn how to craft. So chicken meat was a good test case and I'll be adding a whole bunch of other progressions like that for other items and things that you can craft and build. Next up I added the aging of sapiens and I added children and I added the sort of elders and pregnancy and all of that kind of stuff uh, and that was all you know really vital to the game and, and I think it was the right time to get in and do that. I also added a bit of genetic variation, I made it so that genes can be passed down to children for things like hair colour, skin colour, eye colour. And I added um, facial animations as well, which I think really adds a lot. I haven't actually fleshed it out very much yet, you know, that's more content that will be added later, but have, just seeing them smile and having being able to sort of close their eyes at night is, is a good, important step forward. Then I went back and looked at rivers again. Rivers have been a difficult problem for me in this game um, because the terrain is procedurally generated and the, you know the way that you know the scale of the world works. You can't just um, erode the terrain and have sort of rivers nicely flowing down from mountaintops and stuff. It's just completely not technically feasible. So I had to sort of get a bit creative and figure out ways of doing that. Um, so yeah, I won't go into too much detail here, but that basically built the terrain around the rivers. The rivers became the kind of base building block of the whole world and everything else was built around them. And it's, it's given a really nice look and, and good rivers and a good base to build, build the world around. Next I added Steam Workshop support. So right from basically when I added Lua to the game, I decided that modding was gonna be a really big thing in Sapiens. And so I'm try all the way along, I've been really trying to make it as moddable as possible. There's not even the concept of Sapien in the engine itself. It doesn't know the difference between a rock or a tree or a Sapien or a chicken. So you you know as a mod developer you could get rid of all of that stuff and make a completely different kind of game. So yeah, m the mods are going to be extremely powerful and very flexible. So that's why I thought it was a good time right now to actually add uh, mod support so that right when we first get into alpha testing and stuff people can start making mods and start really um, you know requesting extra features from the engine and stuff that they need. 
This also meant that I had to move a few things out of Lua and over to C and I decided to create a whole kind of separate C based plugin system as well just for just for a few things like particles and terrain generation things that really needed extremely fast performance and I also rewrote my math library and my serialization library and it just did a whole bunch of work here on performance and uh, yeah just making it really rock solid for modders as well. I then went back and looked at how the game would actually start. Until now you'd sort of been flying all over the map looking for tribes, trying to sort of look who was there and uh, it was a bit clunky and a bit sort of strange and not really a good way I think to sort of start the game. So I thought I'd work on this kind of new map mode where you could have a top-down perspective, uh, very kind of high distance so that you're, you're quite well zoomed out and you can get a good feel for the lay of the land and that that would be a really good way to start the game. So you can actually see all these different tribe markers and you can sort of inspect them quite quickly and, and jump between them and find a good, good starting point. The idea is that these are little bands of hunter-gatherers that are sort of moving around and you're choosing one that you'll probably end up sort of settling down and then and growing into a larger settled tribe. I'm not ruling out nomadic play styles but I think for now at least the focus is on just getting, getting the building sort of system working and, and getting you settling down. I also refined the placement tools and added this nice little rotation translation kind of interface and that's just totally transformed the way that you can now build and place stuff. It still needs more work as most things do in the game but you know it's another big step forward. Then I started to think about adding farming and realised before I could really get into that I needed seasons because farming and sort of growth cycles of plants doesn't make any sense if you don't have seasons. So I went through and made a whole bunch of different sort of model types for each season and I made the terrain sort of change so that there was a snow level that sort of came down. I had to redesign how all the biomes work so I've got this whole sort of tag based system now that works fast enough for this sort of massive terrain scale with the snow level changing and everything. I think seasons really like really added a huge amount to the game you know like this is another one of these big things where it's, it's it's just made it so much more real it's made it feel a lot more alive and the world's really kind of breathing and changing around you which just it's just awesome it's, it's so good to finally have this in here i think uh weather weather is probably the next big thing that's going to do that and i'm really looking forward to doing that i think having some clouds and rain and snow and stuff falling is just going to be awesome but um I'm, I'm holding off on that until i have a really good solid sort of case for it gameplay wise uh, I guess at this point like gameplay really is just my focus so unless I have a good reason to put it in for gameplay I'm not doing it uh, but you know uh, weather's going to happen before release obviously. And then with seasons in place I was able to finally add uh, the planting of trees and plants and I've been looking forward to this for so long now so it's really good to finally get it in place and it, what, what I came up with I think is working really well. So you basically just use sort of the, the same sort of building or placing interface to decide where you want the fully grown tree to be and then once you've sort of placed it they will come along and dig a hole and plant the fruit or seed or whatever is required to make the tree grow there and as it is now you'll just have a mound of dirt for the first sort of season or two and then in the first spring you'll get a sapling grow and that'll stay like that through a whole year and then after that it'll grow into a fully grown tree and I think you know it's, it's fairly simple and it just works really nicely and being able to just actually grow food now and sort of feed your sapiens is, is a huge step forward gameplay wise and also the, the creativity that it allows you know the, the ability to sort of make gardens and stuff around your houses and things is, is just great. And I've really just scratched the surface. I think you know, there's going to be a whole bunch of different plant and tree types and ornamental plants and different things that you can sort of place around the place. And yeah, it's, it's, it's starting to really feel pretty good with it as far as all that stuff's concerned. And now we're starting to get nearer the end of the year and I started looking at the relationships between sapiens. I didn't get all that far with it but I just sort of assigned this initial kind of relationship score and made it so that the sort of pregnancy and things were sort of tied to that a little bit. It was it was a bit of a can of worms to be honest and I kind of I think I've got a bit of think, a bit of thinking still to do on all of this but I think the relationships and the AI and the sapiens themselves is really what makes this game interesting and, and it might be challenging at times for me but you know I'll get there and, and it's quite fun and quite rewarding to work on it too so yeah I'm looking forward to carrying on with some of that in the next year.
I also had a good playtesting session here where I was actually able to play the game and build up food supplies and grow the tribe as sort of they had babies and, and you all grew older and stuff. And so at this point it was actually a playable game with gameplay and that was really the first time that I'd really felt how fun this game was going to be. So this marked a line in the sand where the game is now, you know, playable. So I'm switching to a more playtest driven development style. I find this to be a really fun and rewarding part of development where you can basically play the game, note down all the bugs and sort of gameplay issues that you find, and then spend a bunch of time just fixing them and sort of repeating that cycle over and over until you have a game. And now we get to the final devlog video of this year from just a couple of weeks ago. I worked again on pathfinding and uh, made it so that they can now walk many kilometers quite happily and not have any issues with pathfinding. They now split their paths up into smaller chunks instead of trying to sort of do it all at once. And, and so yeah, pathfinding is now working a lot nicer. While I was working on that, I decided I wanted a follow camera. So I wanted the ability to kind of keep a close eye on a sapien and, and just watch what they're up to and follow them around. Uh, this this worked really nicely and it was actually so nice that I kind of decided to integrate it a bit more into the game and make it uh, quite a fundamental part of the kind of user interface and I've since also made it so that you can tab between different sapiens so it's a nice way to kind of keep an eye on everyone and just switch switch through and look where everyone is and I just tidied up a few other user interface issues as well. So that brings us to the end of the year and to the current state of development. Overall I'd have to say it's been a really good year and I've made a lot of progress. I had kind of planned to have an alpha out by the end of this year so, so my plan is to just slowly send it out to a few alpha testers and really only maybe have you know a couple of hundred testers max before release. So you know that, that was always my plan and I'm going to stick with that. But I sort of thought that it might happen before the end of the year except I think probably the biggest factor here is actually that the YouTube video that I did at the end of last year kind of kind of took off and got lots and lots of views and I got heaps of feedback which has actually been really really useful and it's meant that I've kind of got the confidence in my direction without the real need to get uh, get play testers to actually give me that feedback. So I'm already very much aware of a lot of the issues in the game and I've, my to-do list is already quite long. So I really do appreciate that feedback and it's really making quite a difference to, to me and, and motivation levels if, as well. So please do keep it coming, um, you know, I do read all the comments. But over the next 12 months I guess it'll be more of the same, more, very similar to this year. It's going to be a lot of adding, uh, refining all of the elements that are already there, uh, but hopefully quite a lot more of adding content too. And I think, you know, once we get into the sort of, I don't know, April, May, of next year I'd really like to be getting stuck into adding content and really have some alpha testers on board at that point too. And all going well hopefully I'll be doing one more video like this at the end of next year and then launching the game very soon after but we will see. So just a couple of other things the music that you're listening to right now is the theme for Sapiens it is written by the very talented composer John Konsalakis and he's going to be doing um, a substantial amount of the original soundtrack uh, alongside myself. So I'm very excited about that. He's definitely a more talented composer than I am. But, you know, I think together we should be able to come up with a really nice mixture of tracks and have a, have a really awesome soundtrack for the game. Sapiens has a page on Steam, so please do go and add it to your wishlist. Um, I do not have a Patreon or anything like that, so if you want to help support me with the game, then just you know keep leaving leaving comments. Please definitely add it to your wish list, and if you want to get even more involved, come along to the Discord. There's link there's a link in the description, and um, come and have a chat there too. So from here, I'm going to take a few weeks off over Christmas and spend some time with my family and get stuck into it again early next year. And yeah, next year is going to be a very busy year, and hopefully by the end of it, we'll have a game to play. So I hope you like what you see here and we'll see you again in the new year.